Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Now, specifically, we're going to be looking at the TWAB that got released yesterday. We're going to be cutting these into multiple videos. So we're going to talk about the Umbral Engrams and the Umbral Recaster, I think it's called. And then the next one, we'll talk about the changes they're doing to the titles. Because uh, I just don't want to make a really long video and more content, I guess. So... Umbrella Engrams are back. They're pretty insane. Back in 2020, Season of Arrivals introduced a new feature called Umbral Engrams, which allowed Guardians to focus rewards to the type of weapons and armor rolls they most desired. The system was well received by the community, so we decided to do a little tuning and bring them back for Season 13, as well as future seasons in Year 4. While the new seasonal activity will always provide the fastest path to earning new rewards, we want to ensure that regardless of how you spend your time in Destiny, Umbral Engrams allow you to chase new rewards. Similar to Season of Arrivals, Umbral Engrams will drop from completing a variety of content. We have pared back the number of number of activities they will drop from so you can focus on following activities if you are looking to farm some Umbral Engrams. So you can essentially get these from Patrols, Strikes, Crucible, Gambit, The Ordeal, Public Events, Blind Well, Nightmare Hunts, Exo Challenges, New, uh, I'm sorry, New Seasonal Activity, which is later, and then Empire Hunts. No, Umbrella Engrams also have a chance to drop from defeating enemies anywhere in the game, so even if you're not grinding this list of activities and playlists, you'll still be earning some Umbrella Engrams. <laughs> you may notice fewer Umbrella Engrams sitting in your inventory than before. While it was fun to watch Umbrella Engrams uh, rain down on players in Season 11, the drop rates were higher than expected, so we are rebalancing the drop rate. There will be a short quest to show play, or I, I should, I, I was there when the Umbral, or the Prismatic recast were there, so I don't really need this. Uh, but, for the people who weren't, there will be a short quest to show players how to use the new Prismatic Recaster. Read more about this below. To focus Umbral Engrams, this quest is count-wide, so you can, you have it, you have to do it once. So, this is how the the prismatic recaster looks it looks really cool i wonder where it's gonna be hopefully it's not anywhere like super far uh honestly i just want them to rework the tower i hate the like how everything's super far from each other granted it was like that in destiny one but i just feel like just make just make it smaller so i don't have to run everywhere or like at least have teleporters to like one side or, or the other or just uh spawn locations that i can spawn to but I'm lazy, so whatever. So the pr prismatic recaster returns as a kiosk with the ability, with the capability to change umbral engrams into focused umbral engrams, which contain a smaller loot table because umbral engrams are here to stay. The new recaster will sh will have different pages for each season. You will be able to focus engrams to the season of your choice. That's really cool. I actually do think that's cool. Once you have used the Prismatic Recaster to focus your engram, you will still need to take it to the Umbral Decoder to claim your reward. Season of the Hunt's re uh, Wrathborn rewards will not be featured on the Prismatic Recaster in Season 13 because player can, players can still use the Wrathborn Lure to chase specific weapons and rolls. Prismatic Lens. We have a new way to unlock different focusing options for your Umbral engrams. It's basically a new material or... No, yeah, new material prismatic lenses so you can upgrade stuff i don't like the idea of another material going into the loop or into our inventory but at this point who cares all right let's talk about my thoughts um i want to say this is cool i want to say this is a good change but i don't really care uh honestly i don't really give a fuck so let me explain my thought process before <clears throat> people starts telling me that I'm just negative my my whole thing is it would have been cool if we got this in the beginning of the season but whatever my my whole spiel about this is the fact that it just feels like hey we brought something back that you liked and it's like yeah granted we did like it <sighs> it just feels like they're giving us back stuff and you know what would be really dope if we saw something new come like I'm gonna be real honest with you guys This is a dope change. I know the community wanted something like this, but I just want to see something new like the last tab we saw we were getting weapons from the moon and What was it the moon and dreaming dreaming city? 
And in that video, I was like, this is cool. They're giving relevancy to the dungeons again. But at the same time, those dungeons, I've played the shit out of them. So it's not new. It was just, I like the idea that they were like throwing something to the dungeons. But this isn't new. Like we already had on Brilliant Grams. And we're going to get fewer of them. Not saying that's a negative or a positive. I'm just saying that's a thing that's happening. And although it is a good way to get rolls on whatever you want i do remember the umbr umbrella ingram system being shitty for armor stats like you could go for a high stat roll and you would still get like sh like a 58 but oh it's really high on recovery because that's the one you wanted right it's like no, no 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 i want high recovery but a good stat distribution and like at least 60 material or a 60 plus on stats so you're not even guaranteed to get something you actually might think is decent. And I'm not even saying you're god roll, just decent. So, the armor system, I'm already completely like, alright, this is gonna suck ass. I'm more curious to see the actual system itself. Like, will it be actually cool? Or is it just gonna be like, oh, okay, well, like, whenever I get something, I guess. That's the thing, this is not like... Like, the fact that he goes, Umbral and Games are back and they're pretty insane. How are they insane? Show me how they're insane. You should have showed me the pages that you were talking about so i can see what weapons i can get and whatnot i'm i know i know full well i'm being super negative but have you seen the atmosphere around destiny 2 right now it's dude it's so bad and it's funny too because like i'm not going to talk about like everything on the top but i will go to what he says at the end because i think it was cosmo who made this uh made this tab he goes, we know there are a lot of community conversations happening around the current state of the game. I don't want to lean too far into the we're listening meme, but it's 100% true. And it's like, we're listening? I don't even think it's a meme. It's perfectly fine that they say we're listening, but they're not actually retaining what we're saying. Like, they're really listening, but they're just listening and then letting it go one uh, the other ear. At this point, they're not retaining what we're saying. They're not actually looking like sitting down looking us in the eye and say what do you want they're kind of like on their phone and like what do you want and then okay whatever and pops a gum uh bubble gum and just walks away like that's how bungie is treating the player base right now and joe blackburn i i love the tab that he gave us because he gave the community a lot of hope which i think is what everyone needed at the moment but I really resent the tweet that he posted because he said last year I said Destiny's best days are ahead, seeing what's coming. I believe this more than ever, but we have to work to do, to get there. 2021 is going to be a little different for Destiny. Takes some time to validate our plans, but expect a state of Destiny 2021 next season. My like my issue with this statement is the fact that he goes Destiny's best days are ahead, and uh, me personally, I just cannot see that. Like immediately, I'm like, you're already lying to me, dog, because. You're telling me we're going to have better days than Forsaken, than Taken King, than Rise of Iron when that uh, ex DLC, or not DLC, when that update came out for all the raids? You're telling me it's better than all of those days or any of the individual days? I don't believe you for a fucking second because what's his face? Uh, Luke Smith has already told, like, gone out and said we cannot make a Forsaken level expansion. Like, we just can't. So immediately I'm like, okay, so you're telling me Destiny's best days are ahead, but you guys can't make a Forsaken level expansion, which arguably is what everyone wants. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about a lot of Destiny 2 right now, like currently the, this week and next week. So we're gonna talk about the state of the game. We're gonna talk about PvP, PvE. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. It's funny because I actually was looking back and I was like, man, I should probably make like a how to fix destiny video. And I was like, I've already fucking done that. I did that last fucking year, bro. I did that for destiny when it was like, well, I'll have it. I'll have it. It's called how to fix destiny two. And I'm looking, I'm literally looking at it right now. And it was season of the worthy, how to fix strikes and nightfalls, how to fix raids and dungeons, how to fix Gambit and Gambit Prime, how to fix Crucible and PvP events. Like, I made those videos. I'm literally gonna have to see those videos to see, oh, did they do, do any of these changes? And if so, I'll retract those statements. But if not, I'm gonna just fucking say the same thing. So, I know I know, I went on a weird tangent, but it's like, it it's getting so hard to be a Destiny player and fan not even just a fan but like a player just a player because 
you kind of feel you know how like when people like they're joking around and they make fun of you kind of feels like that like Bungie's like we're Bungie's laughing stock because we just keep buying their dumb shit and like this is coming from someone who has been following Bungie since not Halo I'm not a Halo fan I've been following them since Destiny 1 that's when I really got interested. I knew of Bungie, but I never was an Xbox person. I was more PlayStation. So when I heard they were making a, a game like this, I was like, fuck it, we'll, we'll see. And then I, you know, that's history. And it's funny because I just started a hobby with probably an even worse company. Uh, I'll probably talk about this in its own separate video, but to be really quick, I got into uh, Warhammer. Uh, if you guys don't know, it's 40K Warhammer. It's a... Uh, basically a miniature skirmish whatever i i don't play the game i'm mostly in it for like the models uh and modeling and whatnot and painting but i'll have a video up right now of what i usually do and this is basically what i've been doing for the past few days now like i've just been really stuck into this hobby because currently gaming is just for me dry uh don't get me wrong i still love making the ghost runner and the um cyberpunk videos but man when i think about playing destiny 2 i'm just like you know what I, I could do something better with my time because all i'm gonna do is just play a game and then get a weapon that's gonna get sunset in a few seasons so dude we have so much to talk about with destiny 2 and i have not been talking about destiny 2 because currently i just have i've had nothing positive to say but we're gonna talk about everything because i feel like it's important so be ready guys it's gonna it's gonna get pretty negative so like always, if you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets, links are in the description below. Thank you everyone for the support. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one.